what is up everybody welcome back to prison architect and i want to welcome you to episode number five where we're going to talk about the utilities tab the deployment tab and the logistics tab again just breezing over this stuff for any of you beginners out there that are looking for a little bit more information on what we're looking at so the utilities tab is an interesting tab because it's going to bring us into a new view and we're going to be able to see where we need electricity, where we need water, and how we're going to get them there. So after building our power station and our water pump station, you're going to see some little icons blinking here. Obviously, we got electricity and we have water needs. When we go over here and select the electrical cable, it's going to highlight specifically if we have any electrical cable already laid in the prison to make it a little bit easier to distinguish what's going on as having a lot of water and a lot of electricity ran could get a little bit crazy looking after a while uh, all we're doing here is we're just dragging and or clicking and dragging connecting the dots and giving ourselves power to these areas it's a fun thing to note that any light bulbs will take electricity from an area whereas something as specific like a cooker needs to have a direct lead connection to it. You'll see as the workers get to work here that we'll see a change in color of the area to show that we have electrified the area and given power to said rooms. We're also going to see that the water icons, like I was talking about, are almost grayed out to where we don't necessarily see them anymore. That's because we're on the electric electrical tab for the electrical cables. Running water, still pretty much the same thing, except this time we have a couple of different options here. We have a large pipe and a small pipe. Fun thing to note, prisoners like to tunnel out of large pipes it's much easier for them to get to large pipes uh, and get out of your prison. So always have large pipes leading up to the buildings and if you can help it, only have small pipes going to the actual fixtures themselves. So that way they have a much harder time uh, getting through your walls, getting through your pipes and all of that jazz. Small pipes do only have so much distance away from a large main that they can push water. I believe it's something like a hundred squares in total. Don't quote me on that. But eventually you'll see uh, if you go too far, you won't be able to get water without running a larger pipe. So it's always good to plan these things ahead and make sure that you're not giving prisoners too easy access to break out of the prison. A few of the other fun things we have in the menu outside of the water pump station and the power station would be the capacitors this is going to increase the electrical load that we can put on our actual power station so you'll see as they start installing that it'll jump on down there they also funny enough have put in any of our monitoring equipment our cctvs the monitoring station the door control systems the door servos they put those in the utilities as well not quite sure why I would have put them in the objects, but I guess the objects menu is kind of full. Obviously, you use all those items to watch over your prisoners, listen in to them. There's some very specific uses for the logic circuit, logic bridge, and the pressure pad, but we'll get into that in later episodes. We also have the connect, show, and tidy wires for when you're joining together your CCTVs and your monitors and your door servos and door control systems. That way if you are super A-type and you want to designate which way wires are going to go in the prison, you can do that. I personally don't really have the time for that. I'd rather get back to expanding the prison. But as you can see we added capacitors and our power station load has decreased substantially next we're going to move on to the deployment tab and the deployment tab is a fun little tab that'll allow us to designate certain areas of our prison for certain people as you can gather an idea our shared minimum security medium maximum protected supermax and staff as well as any unlocked areas it'll give you interesting little tool tips on there 
But it's always important to mark areas that no prisoners are allowed to go as staff only, so that way your staff can take care of them right away and get them out of there and punished appropriately. This is also going to give you access to allow to assign guards to specific areas of your prison. If this was our canteen and we wanted a guard there all the time, we could go ahead and put the guard in there to make sure everyone's not roughhousing and staying out of trouble. Gives us our guards uh, patrol ability. So this is another just drag and click of specific areas. And we can designate a path for our guards to take and then we would just click on that line one more time as many times as we want for as many guards as we want assigned on that path the same goes for dog patrols and the same goes for armed patrols I like to take my dog patrols and actually run them around the outside of my buildings so that way if they stumble across a hole that somebody's been digging for a while we can catch those prisoners before they escape right clicking will get rid of any guards that you have on here and once you've unlocked the appropriate perk under bureaucracy you will also be able to control the scheduling of when guards would be on these patrols for instance when all the prisoners are asleep we may not need a guard walking around the canteen where they eat because there's going to be no prisoners in there and you just want to make sure that your staff is getting as much rest as possible and lastly we're going to move on to the logistics tab which gives us a nice little breakdown of logistics around the prison for instance assigning prison labor if you were to have a laundry area or a mail room uh, making sure that those prisoners have jobs to do during their free time making them happier food distribution once you've unlocked micromanagement you can designate a kitchen to feed a specific area of the prison or to feed several canteens as long as you have enough food coming out of that kitchen you can keep it separate uh, from the rest of the prison limiting the amount of weapons and things that they can get in there same thing with the laundry distribution you can go ahead and separate your laundry off from the rest of the prison and designate what areas of the prison it does laundry for and you can have minimum security medium and maximum and you can do all those fun things room quality is something that requires a lot of attention in this game as it caught me by surprise each inmate is going to be assigned a room quality number that they're entitled to. So this can range, I believe, from 0 to 6, if I'm not mistaken, which I very well easily could be. And you'll see that once we get into the room quality of things, the better the quality of room, the more well behaved the prisoner. And as the prisoners get into trouble, they're their quality they deserve goes down and if there are no cells to be met they actually will be put in holding cells and it can get quite crowded if you don't have enough of the appropriate quality of room available for the appropriate prisoner so it can get a little bit tedious but adding and taking away bookshelves can change that very quickly when you're talking about building your prisons we're almost done with this beginner series and then we're going to get into something of a let's play so we can actually create a prison and manage it and talk about what we're doing and get into some trouble with some inmates and all that good stuff. But if you guys have any questions, please drop a comment down below or leave a like. I appreciate it and I will see you guys in the next episode. Peace.